So with that caveat, let me go on ahead uh, with the remainder of what I have planned for today um, using my Windows computer and how this um, simulation works on the Windows computer. So I made these two files available. Um, you can download it and <clears throat> run it. You need to have Algodoo installed. I have Algodoo installed already. Uh, I'll start out with the first file. When you, um, well, when you click on the downloaded file or double click on it, it should open in Algodoo automatically, if, as long as you have Algodoo already installed. And this is how it will open up. Let me close some of these uh, uh, plots and boxes so that I can show you how it, um, how it works. Um, so this is for those of you who are able to run Algodoo. This, um, what I intend for this virtual class session to be is basically a quick intro to running Algodoo simulation. So this is the file and uh, this is what I created today. And my goal in creating this file was basically to try to have a simulation version of what would have been your physical lab setup. So this is the um, simulation version of uh, what's described in your lab manual. And I think this lab is a, a little bit better in that um, when you look at the lab manual, you can at least imagine what the lab setup will be because it actually has some diagrams of the lab setup. So let me go to the conservation of energy lab manual. And when you look at the lab manual, this is uh, what it says, part A inclined the track. And you have this diagram of the inclined track and that's what you're seeing in the simulation. Um, so, <laughs> um, so what I'm trying to make up here is kind of, if you wanted to go through these exercises on your own, that, um, that the simulation will at least go some way towards uh, replacing uh, what you would have had to available at your, at your um, in-person lab setup. So uh, let me kind of um, go through the, so the portions of the question where you would have used your lab setup and how the simulation can be used to kind of you know, help your imagination <laughs> in kind of looking at um, uh, uh, what the lab setup would have been. Um, so let me just go through the question and kind of uh, highlight the parts where you would have been interacting with the real physical setup. And right now, uh, not having real physical setup, how your, uh, how the simulation that's been available, made available, can be used to do that. So question one, examine the setup. Yeah, so that is basically what um, this setup is, um, inclined uh, track. Um, it's a little bit longer than your actual track will be, but uh, with a cart on it. And I set up some of the properties here so that um, if I run the simulation, actually the cart kind of runs. Um, uh, and so, so when you open the simulation, it should open post. This is the button that uh, controls the operation of the simulation. And while the simulation is running, you can interact with this environment a little bit. The tool that's best for interacting with the environment while the simulation running is the drag tool. And uh, one thing I would recommend is disable rotation because when the rotation is enabled, this tool is a little bit tricky to use. So with the rotation disabled, it's relatively easy. So what this is actually doing is it's applying force on this object to get it to move. And um, so I move it up here, kind of let it go. It, um, it does kind of simulate what a real physical object would be doing. Let me pause the simulation. You can examine the setup, that's kind of what it looks like. And, um, because we are using simulation, some of the questions, um, what you would have had the opportunity to discuss with your group mates and kind of think through, uh, will basically be bypassing it. Because within the simulation, it kind of just plots the energy. So there's like going through the exercise of figuring out the parameters that kind of doesn't make sense in the context of different software and 
uh, in the physical lab setup, the, mo um, the place where you start out with motion detector measures position of the cart as a, a gives a distance of the cart from the motion detector and you use that one measure, the parameter to measure everything else. And, uh, simulation, kind of the motion detector specific aspect is no longer relevant. <laughs> so let me skip that. Uh, so I guess we are skipping question three too. And uh, what I can show you is the experiment. Uh, question four experiment, rolling the cart down here. Uh, uh, what I can show here is how to use the simulation software to kind of uh, do a simulated version of this experiment. And th the main tool that's uh, available to you is the plotting tool. Um, so when you right click on objects like this, so let me right click here. Um, there's an option to show plot. And using that, I can show plot and you can plot different things. Uh, let me put this here so that I can kind of have a relatively larger plot. And, um, and um, so to simulate what's in the lab manual faithfully, and this is the kind of um, experience you would have had in the lab that I kind of to give you spoiler, um, just tell you <laughs> right now, is uh, this plot, uh, the x-axis here is as a function of position. So I'm going to have to make sure in the simulation that x-axis, it's not as a function of time, but it's uh, as a function of position. Uh, x position, it's not exactly right, but that's as uh, the best what we have right now. And the y-axis will be kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy. And within the lab, you had a local pro thing that was set up for that. So I'm just going to select that for y-axis. Um, the kinetic energy, uh, actually just the linear kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and the total energy. And um, once when I run the simulation, this is what you will see. Uh, this is just the noise. So let me kind of uh, click and drag this here. Uh, let me, uh, click and drag this card. And as it kind of moves, you can see it plotting. Right now, this portion of the plot is an, um, it's kind of, it's the portion that I want to ignore because to me interacting with the environment. So I'm gonna pause the simulation by pressing space bar while holding down on that thing. So I pause the simulation and I let go because simulation is paused, it's not moving right now. I can clear the plot that'll kind of start the plot from scratch so that it doesn't have all those distracting parts. When I now let the simulation run, this cart will drop and then it'll go through the motion that you would see in your lab. So this is kind of what it looks like. And this is what a uh, simulated version of what you would have seen in lab. And you should kind of make sense of uh, what you are seeing um, with uh, um, this is the kind of plot of the linear kinetic energy as a function of position. Does that make sense? This is the gravitational potential energy as a function of position. And the question is, does it make sense? And this is the total energy as a function of position. Does it make sense? And, um, and yeah. And uh, <laughs> so as a function of position, I think a lot of people will find much of this to be kind of unintuitive. And that's the um, experience that you're supposed to go through in lab. And uh, you can um, have that experience on your own. I'm happy to help. But um, so when you do that experiment, this is the plot you are supposed to see. These plots, as weird as they appear, they are the correct plots. That is how they are supposed to appear. Um, and the other um, experiment. So let me actually do one version of the experiment that's not uh, represented here, but that I'll show you um, because uh, part of the reason these plots were so weird was that they were being plotted as a function of position. And I think a lot of what people are expecting intuitively is uh, as a function of uh, time. So let me change this and change the plot so that it's a as a function of time, 
that position. Um, let me rerun that exact same experiment again um, so that you can see a version of the plot that looks more intuitive to you. I'm going to pause the simulation again, clear the plot, and then once I run the simulation, it'll be plotting all these things as a function of time. So that's how it appears. And that might now make sense to you. So the portion that you have interest to, to us is right up until this point when the car to first collides with this block. And what you are seeing is that as a function of time, total energy is mostly constant, which is hopefully illustrating conservation of energy. And you are seeing that as a function of time, kinetic energy is increasing, as you would have expected. Uh, maybe not as parabola. I don't know if you would have expected parabola or not, but kinetic energy is increasing as it rolls down, and potential energy is decreasing as it rolls down. And the thing that illustrates conservation of energy is that these two are kind of mirror images of each other, so that when, they add, when you add up the two energies, they add up to a constant value. So, <laughs> so I think this uh, is a lot more intuitive to a lot of people. Um, so, for the uh, for the the part that's actually in the lab, it says rolling the cart uphill, and um, I think uh, this yeah, and um, I think the best way to roll the cart uphill is actually to add. Um, um, add a thruster. So let me do that right now. So this will, will so uh, within Algodoo, it has a thruster tool, which you can use to add um, kind of a device that will apply a constant force. So let me add a, a thruster to this part of the cart here. Oh, is it that, did I zoom in too much? Uh, it, I think that's fine. Um, and I'm right clicking to kind of set up thruster parameters. Um, so five Newton, that's probably enough force. I want to associate an activation key so that I can, while the simulation is running, I can, with a keyboard, control whether the thruster is on or not. And um, so the key will be toggling it on and off. So when I run the simulation, um, I can turn the thruster on and it kind of, okay, let me undo it. I'm uh, typing control G to undo that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear it, clear the plot, let the simulation run, and I'm going to briefly pulse the thruster. So what I am simulating is in the lab, uh, basically pushing the cart uphill, but trying to time it so that, uh, you know, so the cart doesn't fly off the track. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me do that, zoom out a little bit. And um, I haven't practiced this before, so it might take a few tries. Uh, I'm letting the simulation run by uh, pressing on the space bar, and then I'm going to toggle. Uh, all right. Ah, all right. So um, I, I think um, so. I think it's a fraction of a second I need. I might need to reduce that force. We'll give that another try. Um, ah, okay. I had it right and then uh, messed up. Control G. Okay, one more try. Okay, I think that's a little bit too short. So I'm gonna have to reduce the thrusters force, maybe two Newtons. I think I'll be able to time that one. Okay, yeah, I can definitely time that one. Um, so let me just let it uh, go all the way down. And then now I'm gonna, I think if I let it run for maybe a little bit less than a second, then that'll be just about the right amount of time. Okay, so this is the simulated version of that, um, that part of the lab, where you start by rolling the cart uphill, and then it goes up somewhere here, rolls back down, and hopefully when you see this plot, all of this makes sense. Um, this is the portion where I was rolling it uphill. So you see the total energy. Um, you see the total energy increasing as I'm rolling the cart uphill. And then um, at this point, so this is where I'm no longer rolling it uphill. So from here on is where it's uh, um, kind of moving under the 
force of gravity, normal force um, on its own without friction, with a uh, negligible friction. So the kinetic energy is decreasing, but as kinetic energy decreases, the current is going up, potential energy is increasing, and they, these two changes are happening in such a way that total energy is constant. So, so this is the simulated version of what the real experiment would be. And, um, and I think you can, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so when you do it, this is how the graph should look. And that's the <laughs> experiment. And then um, there are, you know, questions. And I, I think, uh, yeah, um, so, you know, these questions, they work uh, best uh, in the context where you are able to discuss with your partners and uh, yeah, but, um, but do your best. <laughs> As a reminder, all of this is optional. You don't have to do any of it. I'm happy to answer any questions that might come up, um, but I guess uh, I'll just have to leave that there, that you have this simulation available to kind of do a simulated version of these experiments that you would have done in person, but um, yeah. So that's uh, for part A, uh, that's uh, what you should be able to do using um, this uh, file that's been made available. So, so um, that's uh, for part A, um, and let me now get to part B. So I already downloaded the file. This is the part B file. So um, this is uh, how the part B is set up. It's a, a little bit different. Um, it's a setup with um, with uh, we do this hanging mess here, and this is really the part of the lab that um, that I'm a little bit bummed that you are not able to experience it in person with a physical um, um, setup. So I'll have to just do my best to demonstrate it with this simulated setup and. Um, let me just kind of show you with the simulated setup what that looks like so that you can at least have some feeling for this simulated setup. Um, so I'm letting the simulation run and I'm using this drag tool to um, basically apply an applied amount of force so that I can kind of show you. Um, so right now, the purpose of me doing this right now is to show you kind of give you some sense of how much uh, mass is uh, set down here. And by the way, Algodoo is really finicky when it's uh, trying to simulate ropes. Um, um, with the file that I provided, I tried to set up all the material properties so that it um, kind of simulation runs uh, smoothly. I mean, this is um, <laughs> an unrealistic amount of mass. Your cart is not 10 kilograms of mass, but I, I try to set up the parameters so that the simulation runs reasonably, um, especially the rope part of the simulation. So, um, so I guess what you are able to see is that the mass that's hanging here, it's a small enough amount that, um, that it, uh, the cart still rolls down. And I'm hoping you have enough intuition from your dynamics lab with a setup like this so that uh, this doesn't look entirely foreign. So, so that's the setup. Now, um, for the experiment that you are asked to do in the lab, uh, what the, in the lab manual is the rolling the weighted cart uphill. So this is the setup of the weighted cart. This is the weight. And um, so for rolling it uphill, uh, I'm going to use this uh, thruster because um, especially with the finickiness of the, the rope simulation, it's kind of important that I'm able to apply a very controlled amount of force. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to be applying some amount of force using this toggle key um, so that, uh, and, uh, so, so you see how it runs. Uh, um, by the way, for people joining it later, I'm using spacebar to run the simulation or stop the simulation. So I'm pressing spacebar to run the simulation and I'm pressing T to uh, turn on the thruster. And if I do it for too long, then the simulation goes wonky. I don't want any of that. Let me undo. I'm typing in control T to undo. And um, the kind of 
experiment that you're supposed to run is uh, turn on this thruster for a brief period so that the cart rolls uphill and then stops somewhere before it hits this circular thing and then comes back down. So let me run the simulation, pulse on the thruster and stop. Okay, something like that. I could have gone a little bit for longer, um, so maybe pulse on a little more. Uh, okay, that was a little bit too much. So somewhere in between there. Uh, let me let it settle down. So something like that maybe, I don't know. You can play with it as long as you have Windows, not Mac. <laughs> um, and so for, um, so, so hopefully when you run the simulation like that, all of that seems intuitive enough. And uh, the tool that you are using to do this portion of the experiment is the plotting tool. Um, when you right click on this object, you can plot um, properties of the object. And I'm going to use this to plot. Uh, let's see what parameters I need to plot there from the land manual. So in the land manual, I have as a function of time, I have kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy. So let me plot those. As a function of time, I have uh, kinetic energy. I'm going to choose a linear kinetic energy. It's a little bit of a detail. Um, it, it shouldn't matter too much, but linear is the one that's uh, most uh, closely matches your physical experiment. And just the potential gravitational energy. Once again, because in your experiment, that's the only potential energy you are able to track. And energy sum. Um, and I guess that's going to be adding up everything, but that's fine. Not a big problem. So when I let the simulation run. Um, so, you know, it does this uh, whenever the simulation is running. So, um, so you're just going to have to deal with that. Um, so I'm going to just pulse on the uh, simulation for uh, pulse on the simulation for a bit and see what happens. Uh, not same simulation, pulse on the thruster for a bit. And yeah, so that is, that is what I see. And this is what you are expected to see. Uh, plot so, like something like this is what you would have seen in your physical in-person lab. And this is what I want you to observe. So in terms of the kinetic energy, and the potential energy, what you see might not qualitatively, might not be all that different from what you saw earlier. What I want you to see is the total energy and the fact that the total energy is changing. And, um, and when you plot all of them, you can kind of see how the kinetic energy is changing, how the potential energy is changing. They are not exactly mirror images of each other. So when you add them, the total energy is not a flat line. It's a, something that changes. And it actually changes in a very specific way. And this is the thing, this is really why I'm doing this uh, virtual class session, uh, showing this uh, um, uh, simulation so that you can kind of try to get at the conceptual aspect of the lab. And the concept that I'm trying to get at is what the lab will try to get to is, um, well, it's trying to hint at it. It's a, the connection between work and energy. So uh, it's a, this part to be of the lab that will try to show you quantitatively with the plots like this, what the connection between work done and the total and mechanical energy of an object is. And these questions try to walk you through that. Um, and um, plot like this is what you're expected to, to have seen in your lab. And the purpose of the simulation would be so that you can run the simulation and uh, uh, clear the plot. run the simulation and kind of try to figure out for yourself, hey, what's going on? Um, um, you can kind of see it here. Um, up to what point the total energy was increasing, and after what point is the total energy decreasing. And uh, what I want to kind of highlight here is uh, the total energy of what? Remember that I this all this is plotting is plot of this cart. Oops, uh, plot of the cart. So I'll just uh, leave that there, and uh, you can play with it yourself and kind of see where you get from there. 
So I think that uh, everything I wanted to cover in the recorded portion of the virtual class session, it's uh, mainly meant to be a demonstration of the Algodoo simulation software and kind of how you use it. Um, I think I've demonstrated all that. Um, no questions people want to ask on recording. Okay, then for people who are joining by recorded video, uh, 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 now, uh, so there's a question about if uh, all this thing has something to do with the friction. I s deliberately made uh, the simulation so that it's uh, frictionless. When you look at the material property, oh wait, that's not a good example. Uh, when you look at the material property, you will see that it's frictionless. And the only part that's in contact here is, are the wheels actually. And wheels, I made them frictionless. So the change of energy doesn't have anything to do with the friction. It does have something to do with the work, and um, I'm not so. Um, so in the both in the physical lab and in the simulated version of the lab, I'm trying to make a friction as irrelevant as possible because um, I'm, I'm I'm trying to make friction negligible. So friction should be negligible, and uh, you know, it, it's so it, it's uh, yeah. So um, so I hope that answers the question that. It has, ideally it has nothing to do with the friction.